The power concept falls under the bucket of gap scheme runs along with counter and duo. Gap scheme concepts all create a lane for the running back by having the play side of the line down blocking and either adding a puller, a kickout block, or both. Adding a puller creates another gap on the play side of the defense, gaining a numbers advantage while also creating great leverage for the offensive line working to the backside. All right, so today what we're gonna do is break down the power concept. So we're gonna look at 10 personnel, 11 personnel, look at three man fronts, four man fronts, break down some diagrams and also look at some film as well. So as Tom Brady always says, all right, so the first thing that we need to think about is that all blocking schemes are based on rules. So let's go ahead and take a look at the rules for power. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our play side tackle here. He's gonna be responsible for this play side B gap. Play side guard is gonna be responsible for this A gap. Now the center has a dual responsibility. He's gonna be responsible for two gaps, the backside A and the backside B gap. Okay, our backside tackle is actually gonna be responsible for the minus B and minus C gap, All right? So right here, we've got our play side tackle covered, play side guard, center, and our backside tackle. Now we have B, A, A, B, and C. All this is covered. Now what we have is a tight end left and this backside guard. Now the tight end is gonna be responsible for either kicking out this defensive end if he goes upfield, or a lot of times what will happen is when the tackle steps in, this guy is going to spill. And if that's the case, and what we're gonna have to do is log this guy, meaning we're gonna drive him inside. And our puller now has to pull to the point man, but he's gonna have to read the block. If we can kick out, he goes up here, we kick this guy out, we drive this guy inside, we're working to the backside backer, we pull up inside this kick out. If we end up logging this defensive end, we drive him inside, we're gonna have to pull around and then get our eyes inside to this mic here. Now, another thing to note is that we wanna have double teams at the point of attack. We don't want our guard just stepping down even though he's got a three tech over here. That would end up giving us no double team at the point of attack. And this is what we really want. We wanna get a lot of movement on this and drive him to the backside inside linebacker. The backside linebacker who's away from the point man, who is not the point man. So how you determine this really in terms of the point man here, it's gonna be the play side inside linebacker. That's the easiest way to think of this. So we end up saying, hey, we're gonna get a nice double team here and we're gonna to work to the next linebacker backside the point man. If we had another guy here, let's say we had another person here, we would work back to this guy. We'd pull here, we'd pull to a point. All right, we try to kick out or log this guy and then we'd end up blocking this. Now we wouldn't be able to, to pick up the wheel here. He would just be unblocked. We wouldn't be able to handle that. Now, one important note here is imagine we have this nose as a one tech here and the tackle is on the backside. Now we have a three tech. What we're gonna have is the same responsibility, right? We have this working up here. He's gonna chip this guy and work up to this wheel. Now he has to close this gap, but that's a difficult block for the center to make. So what we're gonna have with this backside tackle here is he's gonna step in and then he's gonna hinge. So they essentially, the, the backside tackle and the center are gonna close this gap and then we'll be able to get enough of a piece of this defensive end to make sure he doesn't actually make the tackle in the backfield. So we're able to pick up the defensive end and the three tech as long as we use this hinge technique and the center and the backside tackle work together. All right, so we have a goal line situation here with the 49ers. Let's go ahead and walk through how this will work out blocking scheme wise. What we're gonna do with the center, he's gonna be the one who's back blocking. Right here, we're gonna back block on this guy. We're stepping in to take most dangerous here. If we got a guy head up, we can try and drive this guy right here. And we're gonna step inside to take most dangerous. Here's gonna be our kick out. And then we are pulling to whoever our point man is gonna be. It should be 54 in this case. This is where we should be going. So let's see how this really plays out. Tackle's gonna step in to make sure we can seal this. And then he's gonna hinge here to take 97. So let's look at how this plays out across the board here. So we have our center stepping back, taking this backside three tech here. Our play side guard is gonna step down and grab this zero tech. All right, we end up getting a nice double team here. So they should be working a double team up to 50 at this point. Our fullback is gonna be kicking out this guy right here and we should be pulling. And now he's got a read, 
this double team if we're gonna go inside, which hopefully we never have to go inside. We have to go outside of this guy and get to 54, okay? Now they also have another receiver who inserts. This is the benefit of using a tight formation is that you can insert players to take safeties as well. Okay, so what they end up doing here is they have their guard ends up kind of trapping this defensive end and leaving 54. I'm pretty sure he's supposed to go up here and take 54. That's the logical thing to do, logical conclusion for this. All right, but they end up sneaking it inside anyways. Now look at the aiming point for the running back. I want you to also take note of this. Right when we get the handoff, we're going downhill. Right, right when we get this, we're going downhill. So we should go right in between this. This is the lane where we have the kick out block and the puller, and then we have our double team to the backside backer. So they, that's the running lane that we end up creating right here. All right, if we we're able to pull up and get a piece of this guy, this is a clean walk in. But right now the running back has to just put his head down and get what he can. And now what I wanna do is go through the blocking scheme versus a three-man front, because this is where a lot of coaches will say, well, once we get three-man front, we'll just check out a power, we'll just run something else. Now that is a possibility, you can do that, but you can also just tweak the rules a little bit and make sure that you're able to run the concept well. So let's go ahead and jump into the diagram so I can show you how you can set it up. All right, so what we have here, if you think about traditional rules for this, what will end up happening is we have to step in and take our gap here. We're jumping in here, getting a double team up to this will. We pull for whoever our point man is gonna be, which would have to be the Sam, and then we would kick out this defensive end. Now this is all funky. This does not really work at all. So we don't wanna stick with our traditional rules. We talked about this with the inside zone video. If you have rules that are set up, and you don't have any variations of those rules, eventually you're gonna run into a problem that you can't solve. So you need to change the rules or add tags or something like that. So in this case, what we can do is we can lock this defensive end up with this tackle, right? So he's no longer gonna be responsible for this B gap, okay? So this is how we can do it. We can lock this guy up. We get a double team here up to this will. Now we pull for our point man here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna kick out right here. So realistically, only one major thing changes with this tackle here. Now you do run into some problems if you have the mic press up into this gap, but you can also rep this as more of a trap play if you get that. And the running back just has to be aware that we're just getting right inside this kick out block. And then we gotta aim for the upfield shoulder. If we have, if we have the mic here, we wanna aim for this shoulder not for this shoulder, okay? So we kick him out, and then we're able to bounce it right up north here. Now, nothing is gonna change on the backside for this tackle here, okay? And the other thing is that we can't pick up this jack, right? So if he comes in right off the edge, that's where we're gonna have to put a situation where, hey, we gotta read this guy, right? So if he flies in aggressively and he's going to make the tackle, then we're gonna have to pull it. Now, we don't have solutions for people uh, switching uh, and, and defensive ends looping outside. So you don't have anything really for quarterback keeper. You're not blocking for that. So we don't want to do this. I would say if, if the Jack is able to make the play on this, then we can't run this play, right? The other thing that you can do, we had a quarterback when I was in college who did this really well. He would hand the ball off and he would just step up and just hit this guy. Just get in his way and just give him a little bit of a shoulder to make the block. That is an easy solution as well if you have the guy who can do that. All right, and now I wanna show you a cool fancy variation of power that I'm seeing currently in the NFL. A lot of teams are doing this and this is the first year that I have seen this. Maybe I just haven't been paying attention, but I'm gonna show you a cool way that you can do this that doesn't give the look of power, but ends up in that way. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this version. They're gonna run power to the right here. Now this center, this is a really good way to handle this bear front. So you have a tackle here, you have the nose, you have the tackle, and you have two defensive ends. You'll see this a lot in the NFL. All right, you will see this in goal line situations at lower levels of football, not too common in open field here. But what we're gonna have is everybody stepping back and taking their backside gap. We're going to have our guard pulled to the point man, who is gonna be the six in this case. And then this is the fancy variation that I've seen a lot from teams nowadays. So they motion over and they're gonna snap it like it's a jet sweep type of action, but they're doing it with a big body. And then he becomes a kick out man for our power, right? So because we're working inside out, we, we're almost guaranteeing that we're gonna be able to kick this guy out, especially if he's a wide defensive end. If he's tighter, this probably wouldn't work as much, and this would be a difficult log for him to make, for him to turn, his, get his hips around here and drive out. 
All right, but right now we have our puller coming across. Everybody's got the right leverage except for, for right here. We would like to take play side leverage on this guy. Okay, this he ends up losing it. And that's the, that's the reason why we don't have a big gain here. But if we are able to take uh, the correct leverage, this can go for, for a good chunk here, okay? But this is the power concept from a very different look than the traditional, okay? We don't have any big bodies. We send that motion, boom, comes across, power right up in the A gap, good play. All right, so now we've seen how to do this from 11 personnel. We got the cool, fancy motion. We have the traditional version of power where we're just lining up and going. We looked at it from a four-man front, three-man front. Now let's jump into the 10 personnel. So we're still gonna show you how to do everything versus a four-man and a three-man from 10 personnel. There's a couple of different ways you can do it. Some a little bit fancier than others, but let's get into it. All righty, so now let's say we're gonna run power to the right side here. Okay, how are we gonna handle this defensive end? So we just saw a version where you can motion over and kick this guy out. And then essentially you have your normal version of 11 personnel power and everything is fine with that. But let's say we don't wanna do that option. How else can we do this? So if we stick with our base rules, we're gonna end up with this blocking scheme here. We're gonna back block. He's gotta step in to make sure that we can handle this, this two eye or two technique here, all right? We're able to pick up this defensive end as well with these two. Now we're gonna pull to our point man. And then what we can do is you could even scoot your tailback up a yard and have him run an outside zone stretch type of play. The quarterback can give a little two shuffle here. And then we read this guy. If he goes outfield to attack this running back, we're out here and we're blocking MDM, right? We're gonna block MDM, right? And then if he goes outside, quarterback keeps it and he runs power. Okay, that's one solution. If he crashes, let's say this defensive end crashes, let's quickly draw this up again. Let's say he ends up crashing. When this guy goes in, then we just hand the ball off, right? And now we have blockers out here blocking MDM. If the corner bails, make sure that your receivers know to take this safety who's gonna crash down. This is, I see this a lot of times at lower levels of football and people just end up making plays where they shouldn't, right? If the corner's gonna bail, he doesn't wanna tackle, let's force him to tackle, right? Let's pick up the safety uh, and go from there. So that's one way of doing it. Now let's look at another version of how we can handle this. All right, so now let's say we're gonna run this here to the left. How is this gonna work? He quickly draw the blocking scheme one more time. So we're right in here, hit this hinge technique, handle these two guys. We're pulling for our point man, which is our will. We're gonna read this defensive end. So we're gonna tell our H to take MDM. So he's either taking this will who flies over the top or he's gonna end up taking this free safety who commits. Same thing with our corner here. What we could have is we could have this guy fly out and this guy fly down and him bail. And then essentially this is how it would work. Everybody is responsible for MDM, most dangerous man. That's the way that we teach it here. So what we're gonna end up doing with this defensive end here is we're going to read him again, right? But we can read him a little bit differently. We can have a little bit of a shuffle shuffle with the quarterback, have our running back run a swing. If the tackle steps down and he commits inside, okay, that's gonna make the, the guard really unable to get inside here up to the will, right? But we have a quick, easy pitch. This is a speed option version of this. So we're just gonna quickly pitch it to our our running back here, and now again, we're blocking MDM for these guys out here. If the defensive end widens, then we're gonna shuffle, shuffle, stick our outside foot in the ground and press north, and now we do have a clean block for this will, okay? If the defensive end crashes, the guard can't get to the will because he's gonna have to run through this guy essentially, and that's the benefit of having the H out here blocking always for outside run. If it's outside run and this guy commits, we have it handled. If it's inside run and this guy commits in here, we have this handled here, right? So we have a built-in solution for both problems. We have two people blocking one, but that's okay because they're blocking for specific situations. All right, and now let's get into the three-man front variation from 10 personnel. All right, so different ways that you can handle this here. You could just lock this guy on again, as we talked about before, pull for this guy here and now we have to have our H come in here and then again we're taking most dangerous with these guys so MDM for this H would be very clearly here if we're running power to the right this would obviously be MDM for our Y right here and then you can have your T just working right in here that's one easy way that you can handle this now let's look at another way you can do this all right now here's a special variation for this that I think is pretty effective but this is just a little bit different than 
the traditional power. So we have here responsibility B gap. He's A gap. He's going to be A to B. He's going to be B to minus C. So all this stays the same. But what we're going to have now is a little bit different. So we're going to have this same pitch action with our running back and quarterback here. But instead of pulling to a point man, we're going to pull and kick out. So this really is a trap, right? This really is a trap type of play. And again, you can read this defensive end and it's the same idea. If he widens, if he widens, then we're able to have the quarterback stick his foot in the ground and get vertical, but at least we have this kick out to help guarantee that block is made. You could even have this guy pull and try to go up to the inside leverage. If the defensive end widens too much and he's not a threat, we can have him go up and try to take inside leverage and kick out this backer here. So again, we would be one player here handling outside, one, plant, one player here handling the inside, and we would option this defensive end. Or you could just kind of have it as a trap play. So we're working up here. We're going to kick out this guy. Everything remains the same here. This is all the same thing. We have this option. We stick our foot in the ground. We get vertical. The only thing we can't handle is the jack jumping back inside after he realizes it. That's the only thing. But if you have a really good athlete here, this is still a guy in space that you have to make the tackle, right? So that's that could be a, an advantage that you want. Uh, and then if the defensive end crashes when he steps in, if the defensive end crashes, there is no read at all, right? It's just an automatic, we're gonna try and kick him out, we can't. So we're just gonna cover him up here, log him, and then it's just an automatic pitch for our running back, right? That's the easiest solution for this. So this is another variation. It's kind of a little bit of a fancy one here, kind of a trap play more than it is a power, but it's all the same type of stuff. It's all gap scheme type of responsibilities with, with everybody being responsible for their backside gap. We're pulling for a point man. We're just naming the point man a first level defender rather than a second level defender. All right, so now let's take a look at one cool version of this where we're essentially going to run an unbalanced formation. We have one guy ineligible. We're gonna run a jet sweep from the boundary single receiver and have that same option with a quarterback. So he's either gonna give it or he's gonna keep it and press it vertical. So let's go ahead and jump into the film. All right, so here is our fancy formation and situation. Right now it's not fancy, but it's about to be. We move this guy over. Now we've got something that looks pretty cool. So now we got two receivers on the ball, so he's gonna be ineligible, all right? We got our tight end over here. He is now off the ball, so he's able to come in motion here. All right, pre-snap, it, it didn't look like it was gonna be anything fancy, right? This looks like, hey, it's ace right. All right, now when they motion over, now we have a cool look here, okay? Now they're gonna run this jet sweep. They're gonna option this defensive end. Right, they have their normal puller to the to the front side backer, and they end up with an extra blocker with the running back here. So they have the running back and they have the tight end here. Both are extra blockers. One kicks out, one kicks in, and they take MDM, MDM. And now he's off to the races. Right? If you have a really good athlete, this is a this is a really cool way to get your your guy the ball in space and let him just make plays, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at the full blocking scheme for this. One more time here. So center, we're gonna have to work back here. We're working in here. We're getting this back block here, trying to climb up to the next level. This guy just gets real excited and just levels the guy, uh, but doesn't actually climb to second level. And then here, what we're gonna do is pull to the front side backer. Now with this jet sweep action and the running back running a swing, this works out exactly the way they wanted it to. This backer flies out, they read this guy right in here. He's gonna be the read, right? And then we're pulling to this as the point man. Okay, I know there's a lot of drawing here. He's stepping in and then he's hinging and making sure we handle these two. So if we look at the backside, center comes over, we step in, handle this. So these two guys are going to be covered. This is our guard now getting just real, real excited and just wants to level somebody. Our tackle wants to do this. So he ends up stepping in, gets, a, gets some pretty nice movement, I'd say, on this guy. We pull around, pull around for this front side backer. If the quarterback decides to keep it, he's got a blocker right in front of him. He ends up giving it. And then our running back and tight end who come over do a really good job of kicking out the force defender. So tight end kicks out the force defender right here. And then we're running up in this alley to create that lane for our guy. And now he's gone. 
All right, so as you can see, the power play is a really, really good concept. A lot of teams use it in a lot of different ways, right? It's not one of those concepts that you basically just have to use it in one way. You can use this in a variety of situations. Goal line, you can use it as, as option football as well. It's really good to attach RPOs to it as well when you have pullers. If the mic jumps over like we just saw in the last clip, a slant right behind that is a really good option as well. So tons of different ways you can use this. Hopefully this video was pretty valuable to you. If it was, I'm sure you're gonna absolutely love the 90 Day OC course that I have that breaks down over 30 concepts in a lot of detail just like this. Ton of detail there so you can learn as much as possible to set up your offense in the best way possible and guarantee that you have some pretty good results. It's not things that I'm making up, it's proven concepts, right? Everybody runs this in football, high school, college, NFL. A lot of teams are running these exact concepts and they're fundamentals, right? They work consistently year after year for every team, no matter what country you're in, no matter what level you're really coaching at, these concepts work. So if you wanna get more information on them, keep following the channel, but also check out my 90 day OC course. See you guys in the next one.